Hello, everyone, and welcome to NCFT's live series, where you can see, learn, and explore the world of NCFT through the eyes of barn staff, adaptive riding instructors, and therapists. My name is Chris Swan, and I'm a physical therapist and the program director here at NCFT. We wanted to start our series today with a little bit of background information about NCFT and where we where we come from, and then we'll then the next session will also take you on a tour of the back the background of NCFT. So a little bit about NCFT. Next year we are going to turn 50 years old. We currently offer physical therapy and occupational therapy services, and we have adaptive writing programs and mental health based programs. We recently expanded to include three mindfulness-based seminars that target parents of children with special needs, first responders and healthcare workers, and also the community members at large who are experiencing anxiety and overwhelm during this time. A little bit about the past of NCFT. Originally, we, even though today we're like big and expanding, our our origins were a little more humble and not quite as medically um, focused as they are today. But um, be assured that be assured that our history of NCFT has a lot of intrigue and excitement, a smattering of famous persons, and some really sassy, funny, but always amazing horses. Go over here by Elf a little bit so you can meet one of our horses. So, um, back in 1971, a woman named Phoebe Hurst Cook established a pony club in Woodside, California, as a nonprofit. She also wanted to have a Bolton program, so she um, started to build that as well. To further expand her vaulting program, she cleverly hired a well-known um, vaulting coach. And as the, the um, program started to grow, she really, really wanted to also include a program for children with special needs. So while she and her coach could not figure out how to incorporate children with significant physical limitations, they did manage to get a group together that included children with learning differences, emotional challenges, and hearing impairment. Their um, program continued to grow until that coach sadly had to leave. And, um, and then over time, through various other coaches, the program declined a little bit, but not to be put off, Phoebe had met an Australian woman named Barb Heine, who just happened to also be a physical therapist. So she recruited her, and together they started a physical therapy which could now also include children with more significant uh, physical impairments. Hello, Al. So the vaulting that they were doing uh, was, so vaulting is a program where you're basically sitting on the back of this horse and people are doing uh, gymnastics on it while it runs, trots around in a circle. It's pretty amazing and there's can be up to four people on there and they're jumping on and off. Um, so originally, the therapy program with Barb started with about four uh, patients, and they still had the, um, the vaulting program. And today, we have between 80 and 90 clients, and the vaulting program still exists, and it's been adapted to serve the children um, with, from San Mateo County Schools. So um, Barb ended up being the main driving force for NCEFT that we know today. She was warm and funny and inspired a number of, of therapists and students, and I was lucky enough to be one of the students under Barb Heine. She really pushed for um, serious, like medically based treatment and quality of care, and um, and a lot of edu she brought education to the, both the U.S. and Canada for therapists that use this. Um, so NCFT was not always at Runnymede Road either. Originally, we started over on Woodside Road in a field that was named Summers Field after the family that donated it to um, anybody, any nonprofits that wanted to use it to work with children. They also had no barn on it. And so um, the therapists, oh, 
so the therapists and staff got to ride the horses to NCFT every day for therapy and sessions. They probably used the Woodside Trail System. The Woodside Trail System ran right through the middle of Summers Field, and um, because it did so, a lot of other members from the community would ride past NCFT when they were in sessions and see about all the great work that NCFT was doing. Um, eventually, enough people saw and some connections were made that um, Barb Honey and co coordination with the Sheriff's Department brokered a deal with Woodside Town and they let them build a barn provided that it would house the Sheriff's Department mounted, mounted um, horses. So they did that and so now the therapy horses have a place to stay on site. Aside from the therapy horses living on site, there were also half a dozen uh, rescued geese living in a pond that was on the property. And the weird thing was they made a raft of the geese and they floated on the raft instead of just swimming around the pond by themselves. I don't know why, but they did. And um, there was also a mini horse named Rosie and her daughter Roxy. And Roxy is still at NCFT today. And you can see her on our site with her Sicilian donkey friends, Willie and Wonka. And a little bit about that sassy mare is she um, has a cart that she likes to drive and she can actually pull this person in it. And um, she has been in a number of May Day parades. She's a pro at that. And she's also even been in, at a fashion show with Woodside High School. So she has a very illustrious career. So come down and meet her sometime. Okay, so if you remember from the beginning, NCFT has been a nonprofit. Originally, it was pretty much funded by Phoebe, and, um, but over time, they needed to change their tactic, and they started to ask community to help uh, fund it, and um, started having fundraising events themselves. Oh, uh, this is Honey. Just uh, Sorry, I forgot to introduce my co-partner here. Hi, Honey. <laughs> this is Honey. She is an awesome horse, and she's been with NCFT for quite a few years. Um, and... Also, uh, she is owned by one of our adaptive riding instructors, Heather Schilling. And one thing I forgot to mention was that the Woodside Trail System that they used to bring the horses to NCFT was started by a woman um, and a group of friends named Elsa Schilling. And she was the great, great aunt of Heather as well. So um, that was a really kind of interesting uh, intertwining of histories. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, so um, as time rolled on, like in the 90s, we had to um, change our, uh, change the way that they raised money. They started having more events and asking community members to fund programs, and uh, they, which included things like, um, oh, what's wrong, honey? Uh, included things like golf tournaments, they did uh, bake sales at the horse park. They had tax sales and golf tournament, I think I said, and also poker rides, which were fundraising horse rides. So some cool information here is that um, the, the community was very generous and the people that were helping NCFT also included some famous football players. So an example would be that um, 49er offensive lineman Bubba Harris actually helped with the NCFT golf tournament. He was the MC of Master of Ceremonies. And uh, their quarterback, John Pay, was um, also helped with the, the golf tournament. He was on our board of directors for a time. And he was also instrumental in having um, the move from Woodside Road to where we are now at NCFT. So while, before I keep going and yapping away, I'm going to introduce the sassy mare. Oh, she's like, uh, excuse me. That's Roxy. Hi, Roxy. And she is the king of the roost here, even though she's by far the smallest. She bosses Willie and Wonka around. And this guy is Willie right here. And in the back is Wonka. And they have slightly different hairdos, which you can tell when you look at them. Um, so back to our famous people. Um, 
John Pay actually even won one of the auction items, which he got to take his family on a horse ride through the Woodside Trails, um, led by another member of the board of director, Casey Terralini. And, um, and he had a lot of fun with that, although he wasn't so much in the horses as he was football. And then one other famous quarterback for the Niners, this rumor is totally unconfirmed, but I'm pretty sure it happened, um, actually rode Barb Heine's horse, Pokey, in a Rose Bowl day parade. So that's pretty dang cool. So um, nowadays, uh, we still fundraise for NCFT, except we have our um, gala auction, which is a fun and beautiful event held on site here. They put lights in the arena. It's really, really gorgeous. And um, has a, it has a really warm feeling to it. We also do um, a spring campaign, which just started, hashtag NCFT strong. So check that out. We, in the past, we have done Silicon Valley Gives and Giving Tuesday, which also happened to start today. So please go online and give to your favorite uh, nonprofit organization. Aside from those events year round, we put a lot of time and effort into applying for to foundations and groups for grants so that we can continue to fund our, our services and make them available to all people. In fact, 40% of our clientele receives some sort of uh, financial assistance and we fully fund all veterans and first responders for any of our programs that they wanted to. Uh, one other interesting tidbit, last famous person I have for you, is that during one particularly difficult year financially, two of our board members went to Southern California to ask William Shatner to help NCFT. So I think that's pretty cool. I wish I could have really done that. And for those of you that don't know, William Shatner was the original Captain Kirk of Star Trek, and he also had a series called um, Austin Moonlight, which was pretty cool. Like. So, um, speaking of horses, and how can I not work here, um, NCFT has had some really awesome equine partners throughout the years. We've had at least three horses get national recognition for their abilities in therapy and adaptive riding. And we've had horses that knew their jobs so well. Some of them just love their job and they know it so well that they don't even need a barn, a horse handler back there telling them what to do, but don't tell the barn staff because they're going to get really <laughs> irritated about that. So I'll give you an example. One horse, uh, Barb's horse Java that was there when I was a student. And then when I came back here in, in 2007, she could tell when the therapist told her, the client that they were going to go and stop at the mailbox. Once they started moving, Java walked around the arena and this halted at the mailbox all by herself. <laughs> the horse handler just stood there going, I'm not doing anything. And then um, there was another horse way back that was a vaulting horse, and she was this great, beautiful horse, and her name was Whisper Wish. And she loved her job so much, but the problem was that's the only thing she wanted to do. So anytime they tried to take her on a trail ride or trailer her, she was just grumpy and uh, ornery. So they finally nicknamed her Whisper Witch, which sounds like it was appropriate, but I prefer Whisper Witch. And then one other horse that was on when I was a student, as well as as well as um, when I came back here in 2007, his name was Bodie, and he was a half leader. And my nickname for him is the Trickster because as soon as you weren't paying attention, if you were leading him, he would dive for grass or do some other silly thing and just take you completely off guard. But what he was really known for was escaping from his stall or his paddock. He wouldn't go far. He would open the door and go next door to get hay or go right outside his gate and eat grass. He just wanted to eat. In fact, he wanted to eat so much that one time he, true, this is true, he actually ate a turkey sandwich. <laughs> Don't get that, he ate it. He was so funny. Um, I'm, he, um, he was a great horse. Some other great horses that we've had have also had some really awesome names. One of the first horses that um, Barb used, her name was Paquita. They also had Major and Monty. And then um, along, the, along the history, we've also had Six, Aladdin, Java, I already mentioned, uh, Major, Cowboy, um, 
Topaz, Stormy, Tonka, Sebastian, of course, and Valentine. And I probably missed a few. I know I have because we've had some little names. Oh, six. Did I say six? Um, and then also we've also had um, housed, aside from the ducks, I mean the geese and the horses roaming free and the regular horses, we've also had chickens, uh, cats, and goats. And the goats are, that's a, that's a whole nother day's worth of stories. They're, they were funny. We don't have them anymore, I'll just tell you that. Um, not only our horses have been a constant at NCFT, but also family has been a constant at NCFT. We have a lot of different families, and they include like our family and staff. Staff that work every day to continue uh, to promote the strength and healing that happens at NCFT. We have our family of volunteers that give so generously um, and who, without whom we really could not do what we do. Most of the most generous people. Um, I think in our herd, we have probably about 12 horses right now. And that, that number stays around 12 a lot of times, sometimes they're more, sometimes they're more less. Our newest horse, I'll tell you a secret, is uh, her name is Aldi, and she is a Norwegian Fjord, and she's the cutest thing, and she's a laundress favorite, and you'll meet a laundra next week. Um, but uh, she should be ready to go and start sessions when we start back up after this whole COVID thing. So we're really excited for her. She's she's going to be a great addition to our herd. Hopefully one of those horses will also be for national recognition. She's still um, So where was I? Family of volunteers and also our clients and their families who really inspire us to continue to excel at what we do, to expand what we're doing, and to remain strong for them. Their generosity, despite the, despite what they face every day, is really inspiring and humbling, and also adds to the strength of NCFT. They make us want to continue to improve and maintain the quality of services we have, and um, it's just really amazing to see all of this stuff come together and and. Um, Tomorrow, every day, and that's why I love to come to work, and that's why we all pretty much love to come to work here at NCFT. So, as a reminder, I kind of talked about this is one of our new programs. We've also added um, the mindfulness based seminars, we have also a social skills uh, program. We have um, most years we have a Happy Trails camp for our patients and their siblings, so it's just really fun. Um, and we have other mental health services and um, we're expanding other to other mental health groups for potentially for teens at risk. I guess that's it. So hashtag NCFT strong. It's Giving Tuesday. Give to your favorite nonprofit. And I guess I'm just going to say next time, I promise next time things will be a little more interactive. And um, Alondra's going to take you on a tour of NCFT in the back, back ends not the back ends that's not good behind the scenes there we go behind the scenes at NCFT uh, I have to warn you there's some smelly stuff up there so be glad that this isn't smell of vision and uh that's it that's it I'm out thanks for watching everybody I hope you enjoy the series